What's up, everybody? Um, this is Skyler from Autica, and I'm gonna make some some sounds. <laughs> Let's start with FM8. Just see what happens. I'd like to try to make some percussive elements, but yeah, I want it to be a little bit more abstract and maybe try to make a groove out of like one synth. So this synth. Oh, hey, it's uh, Mr. Panos. Am I saying that right? Alexander Panos. Your tunes are really cool. Oh, it's just a shelf EQ. Hmm. Well, what I want to do is reduce the mids a little bit. So that effectively does the same thing, I suppose. Man, I wanted to make percussions, but now it's already sounding like a bass sound. Well, guess I'll just go with it. Yeah. But I, I always wanted to make a track called uh, a Speaker Test. And I thought of that because of when I played my first gig. I just thought it would be cool if there's like a concept <clears throat> where you play very simple sounds and then have a complete pause silence and experiment with panning just to start off a track and, you know, see what that would be like. So it would be very minimal at the beginning with some very simple waveforms. Maybe I could do that with this. So we'll go to the 
this is all new right here because I, I'm trying to, I like it with a single line and FL a little better. Normally there's two and it just takes up a little more space and I'm really picky. So I guess I like this a little better, but I'm getting used to this format a little more. And this offset will change the speed of that, um, I don't know what you would call that, vibration in the sound and all well, the tuning, I suppose. And yeah, just as like a transition mechanism, maybe. But I don't really want to do that right now. What happened? Yeah, Max told me about your, about uh, the visit. That's, I had no idea you were uh, so, so close. It's crazy. Also, Bellsworth is in, uh, is in Wisconsin. So we, we collaborated with him in person. That was pretty cool. Some things. I really like this software. It's called uh, Multipass from Kilohertz. And it's basically uh, multi band everything. So, you know, you have your bands right here. And then you can start putting in all of these, um, these various effects. Um, and yeah, basically on any of those bands. And you can create pretty, um, uh, pretty interesting sounds that I think I normally wouldn't be able to make. Or the process is so much faster. I could do this with Patcher in FL Studio, but you know, to simply disable this format filter, for example, would take a long time in FL Studio if you built it with Patcher. Whereas here, it's just a click of a button. So the whole um, thing is faster but I don't want to use a format filter <laughs> Mm. 
This is pretty sensitive, I suppose. I, okay, I need to pay attention to the chat. I'm sorry, this is my, I haven't done this in a long time. And, uh, and now, um, it's time to start doing streams and making sounds, um, on the stream. So that's what I'm doing. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it could be boring because I think, uh, 99% of the things that I make for sounds, I end up throwing away. So it's a sad, sad life sometimes, but there's nothing I can do. Proceeds to make sad sound. Yeah, well, it's because of this high note anyway. So. No, um, Attica is not just us, or not just me, it's Marty and Max, but right now I live in Germany, because, um, uh, it's, it's a long story, but I basically just wanted to come here to try doing music, uh, things, and Rawtech also are here. They actually live in the same apartment complex, and so I can go over there for coffee and things like that, and we make music. And I tried to do gigs and things like that, and I never did it before, and I never really went to clubs or anything either. And um, I so I did that, and it's... I'm really bad at talking and making sounds at the same time. I, I can't uh, do it. So, um, yeah, let's go back to multi-pass, though. How are the how are the levels um by the way Levels are good. Great. Levels are good, Jeff. Back to you.
Yeah, dude. Your Europe is cool, man. I like it here. And uh especially the Netherlands is really nice, man. There's some really cool clubs there and people making weird music and also people who like the weird music. So, you just have to find those people and then, you know, make events. It's really pretty cool. That's a little fast, I guess. Jeez. so it doesn't sound like a wobble bass. That really sounds like a wobble bass. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ah, the, um... <clears throat> yeah, there's not much by way of effects. I don't know what this is doing. Let's see. Okay, actually, it's doing quite a bit. Didn't think it would that much. But, well. But, yeah. Didn't expect that, I guess. These are the effects in FM8. <clears throat> um, I suppose I can quickly turn them off by doing that. Yeah, the psych delay. Might be doing a little bit too much, actually. Let's see. I think that's also the the reverser in multipass. It's yeah. I would like to have this um, not modulating that, but rather an envelope, which I haven't used before, but I would like to do it.
one thing I've been starting to do a lot is I have a I have a new sound card called the Audient um, Fort ID fourteen. Um, but anyway, you there's a switch on there that you can just switch to mono, which I know you can do that in FL Studio just by going here and you know doing the thing where you move that knob, and you can also check mono. I never used to pay attention to that, but um, if there are no side signals in a particular playback system, it's possible for your track to fall apart, and I think that happened with some of our tracks, so I don't want to do that anymore. Sometimes I make I make tracks in mono, like I just like I just play the sound. Like right now, coming out of my speakers, it's going to be mono. But for you guys, it'll still be um, stereo. But yeah, sometimes I do that. Just to, and then it's kind of nice when you switch to stereo. Like, whoa, okay, there's a whole other layer there. And then when you go back, you know, it still sounds good mono. So it's not bad to, to try that approach. I don't know what's going on anymore. What are these little things? They're like little uh, goblin creatures. They don't, yeah, they're like mischievous things. Side side nine. What's up? Feed me's little cousins. <laughs> yeah, maybe.
Okay, so this it doesn't sound good when I go up higher because it just turns into noise, but this little region Yeah, like right there seems to be nice. So Yeah, it sounds more like a mechanism because the because the low frequencies are coming through a little bit more. Hmm. I just imagine having like a family party, you know, Thanksgiving or something, you know, and you play this. This is what I do with my life, you know? That's. <laughs> it's uh, some kind of, uh, like, uh, dark uh, comedy or something. I'm not really sure. But I like it. Hmm.
Uh, the little the little knocks in the background, I think, are coming from multi-pass. And it's um, probably the reverser. Let's turn that off. Yep. Yes, it's the reverser. Let's see what it sounds like in mono. Seems to be a phase issue. I'll do that in the studio so you guys can hear that. Probably from the ring mod. Oh no. It's probably coming from... Actually, um... Could be coming from the chorus. No. Fuck it. It still sounds. It still sounds fine. I don't know. It's it's different every time. The sounds are different every time. So I'm gonna have to record a bunch of it and just take the ones I like. Let's just put another, let's just put another, uh, thing on here. So that's almost at two. That's at one, but it's not really doing anything except modulating that one, which is also at one. I'll just stick with that for now.
um, yeah, it's more, see, it's more fun to, like, imagine this going in a song rather than just to make samples. Because I, I kind of view, like, the whole process as together, you know, because the drums and all of the synths or whatever you put in there should fit um, in a lot of different ways, like the little movements that are in there and maybe the tones of uh, percussions and the feeling and everything. It's more exciting, but I do both. Like I, I make sounds separately and I also make sounds and try to put them in a song. But this is normally what happens. Like I, what you see, I guess, like just make sounds. And if it starts sounding like something recognizable <laughs> as like a musical idea, then it, it can, um, yeah, start to develop in a nice way. Um, I've been listening to, I always have been lis like listening to a lot of Trent Muller, and I always like some of his synths that kind of have this uh, multiple tones, and they sound really random in a way, not perfectly pitched and things like that, and I really like that. So that's what this kind of makes me think of. Not that I really intended on making this at the beginning. I intended on making percussion sounds with FM8, but it didn't, uh, it didn't work out, so, well, I like this, these sounds, though. There's a note down there? Oh, sh wow. Okay. I should keep putting those in there. Yeah, I like those.
Hmm. Okay. <sighs> I think I liked... Well, I don't know which version was number two. Hollow but not empty. I, uh, I can speak German. Um, I can speak good enough to, like, um, hold basic conversations, ask where things are, and, like, buy apples, things like that. Um, keep synths. Whittler. That's a good question. Because I think that's changing. Because I like... I found that I really like to have everything, if I can, in synth format. Because, um... Like, if you make a, if you make a track and you make a main section or a chorus that you really like, <clears throat> and you want to make other elements that um, could complement it, such as like a transition uh, mechanism or something like that, or like a, a pad or an intro or anything like that, it, you can make it from that same original uh, synth so that's um, pretty nice to have it on hand so then you could manipulate it in a different way where it, where it still, um, you know, has some qualities of the main sound but sounds different enough that it's, you know, a different component. of It's a different part of the track with a different amount of energy. And that's also nice to keep the synth on hand for th things like that so you can go back and make complementary elements, I guess. Yeah, that's the more soft version. And this is, uh... uh that's with the uh, saw wave and the operator, I think, right? And it was a sine wave, and it was... I used to not get rid of the synths, but I would make the project, export the sample, and then I would never come back to it also. So that's why I think plugins like like the multi-pass uh, thing from Kilohertz is really nice because you can do a lot of manipulation and keep everything in MIDI format, which is pretty nice. So Pinhead Larry, thanks for streaming, dude. No problem, man. It's fun for me, too. Oh, um, I should mention, I don't know how many people are in here, actually. Why I check that? Is that possible? It should be. I have to go to here and check. I don't know. Well, anyway, um, yeah, my point, or what I wanted to say, was that if you guys have, um, if you guys have unreleased material that, um, um, you think might work for a release on Meth Lab recordings, um, yeah, you can send it to me at our, uh, yeah, at our email autica official at gmail.com and I 
I make tracks, yeah, for Autica, of course, but I'm also um, helping with um, with A and R. I think that's what it's called, A and R, which stands for what? I'm not really sure. Artist, something. But basically, yeah. If um, if you uh, if you think tracks are cool, or and you want to submit it, yeah, I'm searching for um, cool music to build. Um, build up the, um, yeah, to just release cool music on Meth Lab. So um, I think pretty much anything um, works so long as, um, you know, it's um, has some artistic, uh, cool artistic ideas and think it's cool. So. That's the other thing. It's something I started doing recently. It's pretty, it's pretty difficult. You know, I I I thought about having a label and things like that, and it's actually it's a lot of work. Not just finding music, but like also the logistic things, which I don't deal with. I just am only looking for music, and that's hard enough. But um, also the logistic side is really pretty hard if you want to do a good job and get you know, exposure, and yeah, shout out to Jeff from Meth Lab, because out of any label I've ever been on, he's work, work, he works so hard to try to get the most out of the music that you create in terms of, you know, making it a complete package, so yeah, definitely, um, you know, if you have cool music, please send it. I'd love to hear it. a separate thing for drums. Uh, drum. Okay. XRA. Yeah, I'll check them out. Where's that? 
cord coming from? Oh, it's the saw thing after the... It's like got the delay. Coming from that one, I guess. Oh, it's going into that one. Right? Wait, what have I done? Not sure what I did. This seems to be controlling the chord thing, the offset. This is also doing things because of the ratio.
Mm-hmm.
Tell them I need I mean no harm. That I'm just sitting in my room and um yeah. Well just making these um antisocial sounds. I forgot that my neighbor upstairs goes to bed around this time, which means that I will put on headphones. Thank <laughs> you. 
the stream will be saved. Um, because, oh, I hope I pressed record. That would be really bad. That would be dumb if I didn't. Hold on, I have to check OBS. Yes, I pressed the record button. That's really good. That's good. I'm glad I did that. Press the button. Thank you.
like the groove kind of thing, but I, I don't like the sounds that much. It sounds like really, yeah, I don't know. The bass lines are weird. I'll save the drum things, though. I can just recreate those in the older project, I think. Okay, I'll be right back. Feel me. You'll be glad to know that I tested the stream with uh, with Max to make sure it worked. But I'm uh, sorry that the connection isn't that great. Um, I prefer FM8 because you can automate, um, because you can automate all of this, all of these things, all these little volume and, and things going into things, and for some reason in Citrus you can't do that. So, like what I'm doing right here in the playlist is not possible with Citrus. If it is, please someone tell me and I'll use Citrus. I don't think it is, and that makes me really sad. Like, let me just open it. So here's Citrus, and here's the same. Here's the same thing, right? Here's the volume. 
for all the different FM, so four going into four, for example, I can't automate that. I can, if I right click it, it turns it off, which is whatever. But if I go here, last tweak parameters, it's still set on FM8. It doesn't even recognize that this is a parameter that, uh, yeah, you can't automate. So, I don't know if FL Studio ever, maybe I should just write them an email. It would probably be the most responsible way to go about doing that. But yeah, Citrus so can't do that. So that's, and I do that all the time, like, because you can create really interesting sounds by, um, you know, doing the thing where you automate these things. Yeah, defects, I, I did that. The um, I did the last tweak thing, and it doesn't recognize that that is a parameter that was tweaked, so you can't do anything with it. Marty really likes to use, um, Marty likes to use FM8, or no, a Citrus. And, yeah, makes good sounds with it also. You can make good, of course you can make great sounds with Citrus. I just like to automate the uh, things a lot. Thank you. 
Albino three. Albino three. No, I don't use Albino three anymore. I don't have it installed. I could, I should actually. It's good synth. But um, actually, the thing about Albino three that was the best was the um, there was a, a function for detuning called spread, which was unique to that synth. And I um I read about it in the manual. I'm not going to pretend to understand everything that was said in the manual, but basically it was just a unique way of detuning. And uh, when you um, detune it just right, you can get really nice, um, just like a really nice, I don't know. Yeah, it just sounds good. Like the... Um, the Samurai, we made a collaboration with Raw Tech called Samurai, and um, that the whole bass line was from uh, Albino 3. And just, like, trying to tweak the... Uh, to tweak the... Yeah, the spread function just perfect so it has a nice texture on the top. Oh, what happened? I messed something up. It was this thing, but that's supposed to be like 450. that's enough of that for now 
So, go with a new thing. I think it would be nice to uh, probably make some drums. Yeah, but I like that there was something going on with number four with the drums. Someone is following you around with the tuba. Oh, man. That reminds me of the Family Guy episode. Pretty sure. Sorry, Visker. I um, I recorded everything, and I'll just upload it to uh, to YouTube. Thank you. 
Spencer is, um, it seems to just add, like, uh, pitch downs to transients. So if I just solo the drums, and here's without it. Doing absolutely nothing, actually. So I have to exaggerate it. So now you can kind of hear it, that it's um, yeah, just adding those, um, adding those pitch downs. But I started with it, and now it's, I don't even need it, I don't think. Thank you. 
Yeah, dude. Shout out to kilohertz. Their stuff is awesome. I bought everything. <laughs> it's really sweet. <laughs>
Glork, glunk. It's a nice name. Glork, glunk.
All right. Well, I think that's all I got in the tank for the day. But, um, yeah. I'll probably do this pretty normally, so there'll be more to come. Thanks for joining the stream. And, yeah, this was, uh, FM8. An FM8 day. An FM8 day is a great day. And made basically like seven versions of this thing called Blank Canvas. So, should be cool. Save the changes, got some sounds. Um. Okay. No problem for the stream. It's, yeah, it's fun. So, I'll just keep doing it. And, and... Yes, Pokemon fanboy, I will upload the, um, the stream to YouTube. I just gotta hit stop recording on the thing. So, stop recording.